Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for your basic Sorgonomics for today. Now I talk about being a digital nomad and what that means to me. But of course, please go check everything out at Sorgatron.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Check out the upcoming webinars and lunch and learns and whatever events we have in the plans. We got a lot of stuff that we're hoping to come out to help you out, uh, uh, you know, on this basis, on a, on a deeper basis. Uh, with your social media video creativity, what are you trying to get out there for your message? And of course, check out for sidekickmediaservices.com. We're building it. It's under construction, but you can follow the social medias in the meantime and contact us if you need any help with your media, social media services as well. So a digital mo- nomad. Uh, in my head, I, and there's other definitions out there. This is the term that's popped in my head when we're talking about some of the stuff on AwesomeCast this week. But we, we were discussing about um, the idea of taking an iPad, you know, as I showed yesterday, taking an iPad, and this is the thing that I work on. Actually, this is the thing, um, as I'm doing my podcast here on Tuesday nights, uh, so I have the iPad here. This is an iPad 3, third generation, the first one with the retina display. And I have, you know, it's even got the old, uh, was a 30-pin, 40-pin connector. And I have the old, this is a gifted to me from my buddy Chilla, because he's got all the new, fancy new keyboards. This is a, a, a standard and I think original Apple keyboard with the dock. Right. And I like it because it's a nice, solid keyboard. I actually have one that is really mushy and kind of cruddy that I, that I use on this that I actually, you know, whenever this is portable, which is uh, actually around here. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of case and got a mushy keyboard in it that's Bluetooth and, and that kind of thing. I really do need to upgrade. I'm way overdue for that. But this is very suitable um, for Again, bringing stuff up, bringing up show notes during our podcast, bring you know, messaging people. It's actually easier here because it's right in front of me. I know the keyboard is attached to this because we have keyboard, 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 and like, okay, this is a computer over here, this is a computer over there. You know, kind of try and figure that out. Like, so it helps me when I'm already multitasking, uh, both producing and um, um, convening and talking on the show and 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 and, and being the traffic cop there. Uh, so. And, 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 and I said on the Awesome Cast, we were talking about the idea that, um, you know, writers that we've known or, or heard of or read about, you know, the big blogs, you know, big successful blogs, um, you know, talk about how they can especially take an iPad and basically live on the iPad, do whatever they need to on the iPad. Um, our friend Alex Cars on, on the Awesome Cast this week uh, messaged us in from California and said that, uh, you know, he's really interested in the new Adobe products, uh, Mix, Fix, um, uh, you know, those little things that do like a couple of things, some Photoshop type aspects that they're bringing into your iPad. And then maybe that's it. Maybe you just touch up a photo. You, you know, one little bit of things that you could do in Photoshop normally. Uh, or maybe you export it to the Creative Cloud and you finish it off over on the Photoshop or, or share it with somebody else to 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 take it to the next level, for perhaps. Um, I think that's a really interesting idea. And, and you know, or, you know, uh, these people that, that are creating content and need to right now, and again, live on an iPad or an Android device, can write something up, do a quick picture, do a quick composition, at least within the limits of the apps in front of them, and uh, and and that's it. And it's it's a little bit of uh, production that's done with it. And at that point, uh, that production is done with it. And, and, you know, you've really streamlined a process. Instead of saying saying taking a picture and saying, okay, now I have to dump it into this ten dollar a month used to be seven hundred dollars forever uh, Photoshop and uh, and touch it up a little bit and do this. And it's a little more complicated way. They really do kind of narrow it down a bit right and and super serve things i mean you do get office full-blown pretty much office i haven't used it i understand it's pretty comparable to and useful and touch first interface of microsoft office on here or the alternatives such as google docs or, or open office or, or pages the apple stuff with icloud um this is a capable computer not just a tablet a computer and you throw a keyboard on that or your apple pencil and it's a very capable, it's a super capable thing. That's why I think it works very much for, uh, my mom gets, got one. Now, my mom's not, a, a, no slouch when it comes to computers. She's been doing AutoCAD and drafting her entire life. But for just sitting there and doing computing things and being on Facebook, this is the thing that makes sense. 
this is the thing that doesn't need all this other cruft that Windows does. So you got to think everything on Windows not is only not only is for your web surfing, but also has to surf printing functions and 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 enterprise solutions. Even if you don't have the enterprise level version of the product, there's something in that code that still has to serve. Uh, the same customers up up in uh, the top of a law firm in downtown Pittsburgh as your grandma who's trying to look up recipes on Pinterest. You know, uh, I, there's a lot of extra stuff. And, and I think when you go to the tablets, you, the extra stuff is basically installable. Right. And and you don't have just just gigs and gigs of, of code that lies dormant. You know, I often think, uh, you know, I'm always peeve myself off when that's a weird phrasing when I'm playing a video game and I haven't beat all these these levels. There are levels that I paid for and that were painstakingly created, but I'm never going to see them. And they're just bits that are lying dormant and not used by me. So. I think it's really impressive. Again, I'm not going to because of the nature of my work because it is video. But again, as I mentioned um, on yesterday's cast, I think it's going to be a very uh, real future. Um, hope I'm thinking in five years or so, maybe a little bit longer, where this thing, something of this form factor is going to have a final cut. You have a touch cast that we mentioned uh, again a couple of times this week across Awesome Cast and Basic Sorgonomics, where this is basically a, a TV studio. That's about it. You know, you got green screen, you got social media on there, and you have a video that gets pumped out of this thing. And without all of this stuff that I have going on here, and if you've seen any of those studio tours I've done, there's a lot of stuff going on around here. And I think that's really important, and I think that streamlines it, and it makes people able to create with less of an overhead. I think um, when it comes to that, no, that's going to be another tangent we'll touch on another day. Um, but I, I, I think that's really important uh, to kind of look at that and, and, and how mobile people can be. How many people are, I, I'm pretty sure my wife, for the most part, does all of her social media and all her computer and all of her communications on her phone, in Facebook, everywhere else. And how many, look at the numbers, that's, that's where people are. And, and, and if this means that this becomes a more capable computer in comparison to the phone that we are all already living on, that's it. I'm pretty sure that my father-in-law, when I saw him, he was always on his com- his phone, which, by the way, is still an iPhone four, and he's on Facebook. And I see him like I know I see him liking my stuff on Facebook, and I know he's on that phone. And that's I'm pretty sure pretty much all he's using for the internet, and that's a gateway. And how much would he not be? I want to say updated. How much would he not be in touch with what's going on day to day? more than what's on the television if it wasn't for that little gadget that he has that's still very capable even for an iPhone 4. So that's how we're our digital nomads. We're not locked down to a desk and a computer like we used to. I got to take, I got to spend my time on the Facebook, right? Over here in the den by myself, away from the TV and everything else. We pick that thing up. We go, we take this to the coffee shop. We take this to the co-working space. That's how I'm working. I'm taking this laptop and, 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 and everything is there and it's in the cloud. Cloud, I'm Sabu style, up in the cloud, uh, and, and, and that kind of thing. And I think that's really important to, to consider how 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 severed we are. I think it was uh, Justin Kanaki recently who talked about how Wi-Fi is such an incredible thing. We get the freaking internet from the air, and how that has untethered us from everything is just very impressive. And I think we need to take stock and consider that as we become these digital nomads. Let me know what you think of the concept of the ideas we're talking about today at Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, Sorgatron.com, and uh, you guys have a good one. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.